The 2K Sports Pregame Show. Oh. Hey everybody, Ernie Johnson welcoming you to the NBA on 2K Sports. I'm joined by the Diesel, Shaquille O'Neal, and the Jet, Kenny Smith. Tonight, it'll be the Dallas Mavericks going up against the Los Angeles Lakers. And for Los Angeles, they've made a nice push as we've reached the middle part of the schedule. They look like a different team than they did in the early part of the season. Well, we knew Harrison Barnes would see a boost in scoring after leaving Golden State, but man, I think it's safe to say he's exceeded expectations, you think? You know, he could put up 20 a game as a focal point. You know, his ISO game, Kenny, is fantastic. I, I agree. Can he be a number one option? Uh, I think he's he can be a number one option, but I think he serves best as a number two option because then he can kind of roam around and, it, and the dependability isn't there every night. Uh, that's it for us for now. Kevin Harlan standing by, ready to bring you the play-by-play. -play. It's game time in Los Angeles from the Staples Center. All the crowd ready to go as they look to cheer on the Lakers. Hi, this is Kevin Harlan alongside Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, our Hall of Fame sideline reporter David Aldridge. And a special treat here tonight, joining us courtside is five-time NBA champion Kobe Bryant. Kobe, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it, man. It's always a pleasure to stop by and help out. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. I'm sure. The Mavericks looking for a strong start to this road trip. This is an important game for them because they've really been struggling. Just one win in their last five games. Kevin, there, there's just something about the road that gives a team to, to really come together. It, it's you against the world, and, and you can really bond and have a chance to become a closer unit, and oftentimes that can result in better basketball. Before we get going, let's hear from David Aldridge down on the sideline. David? Well, Kevin, Channing Fry's floor spacing puts opposing bigs in a bind. Fry says big guys like to paint. I make them allergic to them. Their big guys want to help, but he can't. He's got to come to Fryland. Just sit out there with me. So it's a pick your poison kind of thing. Kevin, if there's one place I know you'll love, it's Fryland. <laughs> That's right, T.A. You and I both, maybe after the broadcast, you and I can swing over there for a bite. <laughs> And the trend around the league, Kobe, is more offense, more three-pointers, certainly spacing, fluid offense, scoring is up around the league in a measurable way from, uh, it seems like, year to year. Do you, do you like the way this is trending, or do you think the NBA should maybe put a governor on this, harness it in just a little bit? <laughs> well, I, I think it'll swing go? back to the way, I mean. Do you? Yeah, because the, the game has gone through that progression before. You know, it's constantly evolving. And so I think you'll see it swing back eventually. You'll have a couple teams that are just big mm -hmm. and you know, may have a dominant post player, and all of a sudden you're going inside, and then that team will win a championship, and then the rest of the teams in the league will try to copycat the way the game is played that way. And then things will swing back. So it, you know, it's just natural evolution of the game, I think. All right, let's set the floor. Courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. On the court for the Mavericks, Matthews and Barnes, the forward pair. Smith is out there with J.J. Barea. And it's Nowitzki in at the five, roaming the paint. Ingram, wide open, gets it to go from beyond the up. And over the course of your career, Kobe, five NBA championships. 
Uh, are there any of those that really stand out among among the, the, the five that you accumulated? The last one, beating the Celtics. That, that was the hardest one by far to get. Why so? Well, you know, we, we're going into Boston now with the series tied 1-1. And Boston is absolutely excited about mm -hmm. having a split and going home now and having three games at home, thinking that the series was not going to come back to L.A. And so that was an interesting playing flight for us. And then to go out and get the, the very next game, just to go down 3-2, coming back to L.A., and, uh, and then to finally pull out that series after being down 15 in the fourth quarter against the Celtics. Thank you to bet in that. And after 20 years in the NBA, Kobe, you were able to play with so many teammates. Uh, can you make a, a short list of some of your favorites over the years? Oh, played? yeah. Yeah, let's see. Pau Gasol yeah. uh, for me. Um, Derek Fisher. And a quality, and a quality person. Oh, yeah, I mean, just, just the nicest guy you'll ever yeah, meet. Yeah, right, right. You know? And uh, Derek Fisher, Rony Turioff, who's one of my all-time mm. favorites. Uh, Lamar Odom, Shaq, obviously, Robert Horry, Rick Fox. I mean, I, I've been Sheldon. very fortunate to play with some some great team. Horace Grant, yeah. A.C. Green. I mean, the list goes Brian Harper. I mean, I can go on and on all day long. Uh, Brian Shaw. I mean, I was very fortunate to have some really good teammates. The Mavericks shooting their first free throws of the night right here. That's good from Barnes. Well, Kobe, something that's such a, a huge tool in the NBA and the team's offense is, is the pick and roll, the screen roll game. You've done it as well as anybody. Just how are the nuances and the attention to detail important to make that play work? Well, it's really important, but the screen roll today is run differently than it was, say, when Utah was running it with Stockton and Malone. What you're seeing now is more of a spread floor uh, screen roll action where it makes rotations very difficult because you have to rotate off the shooters <laughs> at a distance. Right. Um, so now what you tend to see more teams try to down pick and roll coverages and sending yes. guys to one side of the floor and try to play the screen roll coverage with two men and try to not have three guys in the action. You have to rotate and now push your team behind. Right. And that is a dance of can you play the screen roll with just two guys and on offense? Can I force you to have to have a third guy come in and rotate. If I can do that offensively, then you're behind. First quarter, about a minute and a half in. And Barnes comes to help. Five on the clock. Here is Caldwell Pope. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Dirk Nowitzki picks up that one. And that quick first step that Caldwell Pope possesses is lethal. Drawing the contact there thanks to his aggressiveness. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. And Kobe, something that has changed in the NBA over the course of your career is the role of the power forward, the four. More and more, you need to be able to stretch the floor, take your guy outside, shoot the three. Do you feel uh, that that's a trend, or is that something you think that is here to stay in the NBA? Well, you know, I think things will evolve and things will change. I mean, you start getting you know, power forwards like Tim Duncan and Garnett back in the league, mm -hmm. you know, Dirk. All of a sudden, it becomes less and less of a commodity to have smaller fours. Right. Because <laughs> you're going to yeah. need to deal with the Tim Duncans and the Garnets <laughs> of the world. You know, so it's, I think it's just a natural evolution thing. Did you, when you had to guard a big like that, ever fear going out and, and trying to get him on the side or, or even working him inside the lane where he would have more power, more more advantage? No, I never worried about it too much. I, what I try to do is I always try to study the film and figure out what their tendencies are, what their sweet spots are, and you just try to get them off of that. It's not necessarily about the size of them, uh, but how to get yourself in position when you can knock them off balance a little bit and use the lack of size that you have to disorient them. Boy, the speed of Barnes, Kevin, blasts around defenders and gets to the bucket with ease. Nice. Passes to Randall. And being over the limit this early really can affect your aggressiveness defensively. They have got to play under control. Hey, Kobe, you know, when you, when you take a look at great NBA rivalries, your mind goes more to the past than the present. I'm not sure why that is, but maybe you can enlighten us why rivalries seem to matter more or, or we're more 
uh, in, in our minds Two from shot. yesteryear as opposed to today. Because we can recall where we were when. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right? right, yeah. The, the right. recollection is always more powerful uh, in retrospect, right? I mean, that, that's always, you remember where you were when, you know, Magic hit that running hook shot. Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, some people can remember where they were when Nelson hit that shot that bounced off the back of the rim and almost touched the rafters and fell back in, you know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's I think it's those, those memories that create a lasting impact. And even though in today's game, you can look at it and say, there's no real rivalries in today's game. There are. But they're only sink in over time. Mm-hmm. So you think the Cleveland Golden State rivalry, because the greats are on on opposite sides, there will linger and, and will Absolutely. resonate like that. Absolutely. Talk, Kobe, about some of the great one-on-one scores. Uh, you might be the best ever, actually. And, and, and but when you take a look at the crop now, who are some good guys in that one-on-one category that you like? Kyrie, sensation. Yeah, he, great he, handle. Yeah, How about his handle? Like, what one of the best ever, man. Yeah, but he can post too, though. You know, I mean, right? That's the that's the thing is he can post up. He can turn left shoulder. He can turn right shoulder. He can shoot a left hand jump hook coming across the middle. He can pull up going left. He can pull up going right. He can attack off the handle. Mm-hmm. He can attack off a triple threat. Mm-hmm. You know, he's built the game without any weaknesses. I think most players, I think, should be thankful that he's not six foot six. You're right. Uh, he, he'd be, well, he'd be Kobe yeah. Bryant. Then, yeah, right? Yeah. He'd be Kobe Bryant. <laughs> but I, I I always thought that you know when his dad played. Big time college yep. basketball played in Australia. Your dad played. I mean, I, there is something inherent, regardless of how much that comes from the son of a pro player. Growing up overseas as well. well exactly in Australia. Growing up overseas exactly. as well, and exactly. uh, you look at his game being so fundamentally sound, mm-hmm. having basic structure. There's a lot to be said for that. Absolutely. That one goes in. Ingram's got five points so far. Kobe, for a guy like yourself who made an incredible amount of three-point shots during your career, what is it like watching Steph Curry? Just how much has he changed the league? It was always watching the dunks of Jordan. Now it's we got kids that want to shoot the ball from distance. Yeah, yeah, shooting the ball from distance now has kind of become like a home run in baseball, yeah, right? Yeah. Where it's exciting to watch the ball in flight. <laughs> I think it's great because it just adds more love to the game, more things that players could do that, or kids can do that can't dunk. Right? It's like dunking was the thing, right? But now the kids that can dunk are something else that's yeah. fun. It's something else that's entertaining, like shooting threes. Right? So oh boy, great. that takes a lot of work. Huh? Yeah, it sure does. I mean, it's a lot of repetition. Hundreds, hundreds of shots yeah. daily. Yeah, and it's a lot of repetition. I mean, you know, Steph, you watch him out there playing and making all these shots. He's put in hours and hours and hours of hard work and continues to do so. And stolen by Barnes. Jumps up, and it's Barnes slamming it down. Boy, strength and body control on display there from Barnes. I tell you what, he's got a competitive spirit to him. He doesn't want any defender to get the better of him. And the replay is courtesy of Under Armour. Unleash chaos. It was a great sequence from the steal all the way to the finish at the other end. Here's Hart following the score by Dallas. Lopez, a screen on Matthews. And Barnes comes to help. Lopez dishes to Randall. Here's Ingram. Los Angeles with another miss. With that three-point shooting on the rise, Kobe, if you were coming into the league right now, would you try to lean more in that direction than the incredible acrobat that you were when you when you were uh, you know in your prime? Um, it depends depends who I was playing against. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I try to build my game to be able to do all those things. And you could. I mean, you're like um, one of the few guys that could do all those Yeah, so I, it just depends on who I was matching up against, which determines then how I would try to punish the defense. <laughs> I like that word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of a softer one. I was no, like, yeah, no, no punish is a good You're honest. One. You're <laughs> honest. <laughs> You know, Kobe, the league seems to be moving away from isolation basketball, sometimes called hero ball in favor of more ball movement, more of a fluid offense. Uh, what do you make of that trend? Well, I, I think it's the right thing. I mean, if you look at the way the Knicks played, for example, when they had uh, you know, Bradley, Busher, Phil was coming off the bench. Well, you are a historian. You, lo- you oh, love God, the history yes. of the game, don't oh, you? Oh, my God. I mean, yes. I can just tell working with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Holtzman was coaching. We had Frazier out there. I mean, they, 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 they moved the ball. I mean, everything was predicated on ball movement, yeah. as was the Celtics with Fred Auerbach. And then in the 80s, things changed a little bit. You start going to more isolation ball, where guys would post deep and uh, force the double coverage to come all the way down to them, and then you start moving the ball around. Now you start seeing a spread offense, where the thing, the ball's moving again like it was when the Knicks were playing, when the the Celtics were playing. And so, you know, I, I think it just depends on the style of defense that you're seeing and the personnel that you have. I think that determines your style of play. Here's Ingram after Wesley Matthews' score. They need this. 
count the basket. And that's now seven points for Brandon Ingram. Kobe, that fadeaway jump shot here is such a foundational part of your game. What's the key to that particular shot? And, and who's carrying the torch for that shot now? Well, yeah, the fadeaway is a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, there's different ways to shoot the fadeaway. There's the Kim Olajuwon way of shooting the fadeaway. There's the Michael way of shooting the fadeaway. Oscar used to do it. I know you, you Oscar like, used to do it yes. quite a bit. So I try to use bits and pieces from each, mm -hmm. depending on the defender that I'm facing. But yeah, there's certain players that are carrying that shot now. LeBron shoots the, the fadeaway quite often, uh, as does KD. He shoots it a lot. Uh, Clay will shoot it. You know, Kawhi will shoot it quite a bit off the of pull-up jumpers and things of that sort. So there are a lot of players doing it. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Kobe, there are a lot of great guards and wings in the league right now. When you look around, uh, are there any that remind you of the way you played or maybe are approaching, you know, going down that road and say, I, I want to be like Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I watch a lot of his tapes, much like you did when you were growing up. Yeah, well, IT, Isaiah is, uh, has a hunger and a thirst for the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he's not going to stop. He's constantly curious. He's constantly His working. His size makes him a different kind of guy, though. Isn't that doesn't? unbelievable, though? It is shocking. That's unbelievable. But he, he can finish at the rim. He can shoot the long ball. He can pull up left and right. You know, he has great physicality and a great body about him where he can punish bigs at the rim. And the other is Kawhi. I mean, when I watch Kawhi play, I just like, you know, I'm just looking. I'm just like looking in the mirror. You know, the moves, the, the positions on the floor. I'm so glad you said that. I feel <laughs> the same way. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. And it's a great, great feeling because, you know, I'm sure Michael felt the same way. Right, when he retired and you watch me play, you're seeing the same spots. You're seeing a person who studied the person that came before. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel when the wheel's already been created. You just put it on a different car. <laughs> well, you know, you know, he has he has been guided by his coaching staff to watch you and Michael Jordan tape. And yeah. I, I think that's kind of what, what he's done. Yeah, well, we, we've, you know, connected. We've talked about this stuff before in the past. And, you know, again, he's a curious kid. And all business. Yeah, curious. He steps out on the floor, he's all business. He's yeah. nothing, nothing funny. There's nothing silly going on. He's here to do his job. And he's here to help San Antonio win games. They get it back. A nice shot by Berea. Berea's got his second basket. And the story here, Kevin, early on, is how well they've shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far, and if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. Now here's Ingram. 17 points for him last game against Minnesota. Yeah, passed the ball well that last time out. Pinpoint passes and racked up a bunch of assists. And, Kobe, how did you learn to watch tape? Because there are guys now watching tape, and they'll just go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you wonder if it's really even sinking in. Trial watch, and error. Yeah, right, right. But, but really, that, that was it. Trial and error. You know, you start looking at things, you start saying, man, like if I'm watching a, an edit on a player, mm -hmm. and I watch one particular game, and then I look at the next game, he's doing the same thing. And the next night, he's doing the same thing. Hold on, let me go back and watch. And then you start looking for consistent behaviors uh, or patterns in their behavior. And then you think, okay, maybe that's something that's a tendency for him. Let me go back and check. Two dribbles, turn. Two dribbles, turn. Two dribbles, turn. Two dribbles, turn. Two dribbles. Oh, my God. Yeah, there it is. It. There's the pattern. Right? So what if mm -hmm. I interrupt him between his first and second dribble and throw him off a of rhythm? What will happen then? Right? What if I know he's going to go one, two, turn right shoulder? I let him go one, two. Now I jump to his right shoulder. Now you can't turn there. <laughs> what happens then? Right? You throw them off of their patterns. And the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, they're getting crushed, killed, hammered, pulverized in the post. Some changes for the Lakers. Channing Fries checked in for Lopez. Tyler Ennis comes in for Contavious Caldwell Pope. And Isaiah Thomas subbed in for Hart. Kobe, you were a player who lived in the gym. What motivated you as you go back and look at all those hours you spent in the gym to do that, to follow that path? I loved it. I loved the game. It wasn't a matter of working hard. I didn't realize I was working hard until like my second or third year in the league. When I realized here in the NBA, a lot of players don't do that. <laughs> right. It was kind of a big shock to me. Like, I assumed everybody in the NBA. Just worked hard. Yeah, but to me, it wasn't hard work. It was like, I love doing this. Like, there's no place on earth I'd rather be than be here in this gym with a basketball in the hoop. But the greats are always the hardest workers, aren't they? I mean, right, have you ever seen a great player who is not the hardest worker on their team? No, I've seen players have great seasons. And, you know, then the next season, it's they not fall. so much. Right. And then they have another great one. And the, the consistency isn't there. Mm -hmm. 
the truly great players love what they do, and that looks like hard work to the outside world. Did you enjoy playing the game? There was so much you put into the game, but did you enjoy the game? I did. I enjoyed the game. I loved playing, you know, the competition and all that, the getting ready and all that, but I enjoyed practice more. Did you? I did. I enjoyed training and practice more than I did the game. Knocked away. McDermott with a steal. The Mavericks, another fast break chance right here. Here's Farrell. It's good. And guys, what do you think about the hustle stats here for the Mavericks? And it's been about their defense. They're playing with a frenetic pace, putting a lot of pressure on the ball handlers and forcing turnovers. Something else they've done right so far from the get-go tonight is, is run. I mean, so much of their offense has come off the fast break. Well, Kobe, you look at all the former Defensive Player of the Year, and uh, they're almost always big men. You were a nine-time first-team all-defensive selection in the NBA. Do you think guards sometimes get overlooked at the impact they have in a game and a play? <laughs> yeah, they, oh, they definitely do. All the time, yeah. huh? I think the bigs have a huge responsibility in protecting the rim, and those things are very easy to measure. Right, block right? shots. And blocks and, right, and exactly. And rebounding, you're altering, yeah. right. altering shots or defensive rebounds. For guards, it's tougher. For guards, it's tougher. But still in all, there's some guards out there who have done it. You know, Michael and Gary Payton and, you know, Kawhi Leonard, I count him as a guard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're just phenomenal defensive players. Where does that mindset come from, that defensive mindset, when you're an offensive gifted player like yourself? Well, I think that's a truly competitive person. You know, some players will call themselves competitive, but you're not truly competitive if you only compete at one end of the floor. That's not what true competitive people do. Mm. The first one falls. Some say, Kobe, that the shooting guard crop in the NBA right now, a little light in terms of depth, not quite as many top two guards as we used to see play the game. Who do you like among some of the two guards you see now in the NBA? Well, it depends who we're considering a two guard. Right, now, because you know, uh, they, the they just ones, blend, the twos, don't they? The threes, they all, they all just blend. The combo guards yeah. are playing some forward position. It's tough, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, shooting guards to me are guards that have to do everything. You have to be able to play the post. You have to be able to play the perimeter. You have to be able to play the point. You have to be able to, you have to do everything. So I'll put Russell Westbrook in that category. I'll put James Harden in that category. I'll put Kawhi Leonard in that category. Like, There's a lot of players I'm forgetting. Even Giannis, I would say, is two guard because yes. of what he does. Yes. Um, so th there's a lot, a lot of talented guards out there. Did you like the ball in your hand, bringing it up, or would you have rather someone else bring it up, then get it to you in the half court, and then do what you yeah, did? Yeah, that's the one thing I'm jealous about Michael because Michael didn't have to do that. He had right. Pippen. Oh, yes, right, <laughs> so, who always brought it up. Yeah, yes, so he could yes. focus on coming off the of screens and mm -hmm. catching and shooting. He didn't have to think about facilitating first. He could think about scoring and then passing out of double teams. And Dallas calls their first time out of the game. And Kobe, you talked about coming off screen. Some guys come off a screen and kind of just lollygate. You came off and you, you, you yeah, pass the ball and then get back at it efficient. again. Yeah. Efficient, efficient, efficient. Explode off those screens. angles, right? Yes. You gotta be able to read those things. And when you're catching, you're in attack mode all the time. But then that's it's demoralizing to the defense. I'm sure it is. Because you're always on. Yeah. You're always looking, you're always checking, you're always in fear that he's going to attack. So yeah, we we always try to keep our foot in the gas. Mm. Always. Our foot in the throat. Yeah. Now let's check out the rebounds and where they're coming from. Here's a breakdown showing the front court and the back court rebounding numbers for the Mavericks. Well, you, you love seeing the back court stay active and, and putting that speed and quickness to use on the glass. They've gotten a lot of rebounds and helping to do whatever they can for the win. Yeah, you know, Wesley Matthews has made himself an efficient scorer who also has gained a reputation as a good defender. Pass to Kuzma. There's the pick. In the corner, it's Ingram. And they get it. And that one is off. 
They've been sensational on the backboard to start this game. Yeah, sensational is a really good word for it, Greg. They're tearing it up on the glass. Now here's Ingram following the miss by Wesley Matthews. Ingram kicks to Thomas. Inside. The eight-footer. Mavericks with the rebound. Outplayed in the previous game on their schedule. Losing to Sacramento. Yeah, they lost the momentum. And, and it's a bit surprising that that one got away from them. Because for long stretches, they were the better team. Well, if you only looked at the stat sheet, you'd have a hard time figuring out how they lost it. I mean, it was a case of a few small things, some of the intangibles that didn't go their way in the end. And, Kobe, you look around the league and you see a lot of former players as head coaches, guys that you actually played against. Have you ever thought about coaching down the line? <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, I have not. Not for me. You know, it's for them, though, but it's not for me. I, I would think that it would be tough to try to get the same result out of players you coach and not comparing it to way to the way you play, the way you prepare, the way you were coached. That's what I hear. I, I, I just don't have the desire to even think about it that far. I mean, I, it's just it's not something that I'm into. Um, but that's the challenges I hear. You know, when Bird was coaching, when Magic was coaching, I always hear that as being the challenge. Um, but ultimately, you know, you have to find different ways to to motivate players. And, mm -hmm. You know, nobody's the same, right? So you just try to have to figure out how to get them to their Good highest shot. level. Um, but still in all, coaching is just not for me. The first free throw is good. Both free throws good from Isaiah Thomas. It's been all Mavericks. Matthews into the lane. No good that time. Lakers shooting looking a little out of sorts early. 37%. There's the steal. And now the fast break. Matthews with the ball. Lands soft on the front of the rim and drops. Matthews has got 24 points. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of them. This is Duenas. Nice ball movement here by the Lakers. Puts up a three. And the rebound goes to the Mavericks. Farrell's got three rebounds so far in the game. Matthews, no good. And you know, that's an easy one. You can't miss these shots. Those are makeable shots, especially when the defense isn't on its game. Just three on the clock. And no good. And the buzzer sounds and the first, and we've got a blowout underway here. The Mavericks on top, running away with it. Live from the Staples Center, you're watching 2K Sports. Welcome back, everyone, to lopsided first quarter in the books already as we start this second quarter. And a comfortable margin for the Mavericks here, guys. I mean, a huge lead, and already after this first quarter, they're starting to make it look easy. Yeah, like an avalanche, Greg, overpowering the defense on a majority of their possessions. The Lakers shooting about 33%, not happy with their play on that end. Kobe, a big part of the talent evaluation today is the psychological impact in that aspect, which I think will lead teams toward one prospect over another. If you were looking for personality traits in players uh, and you were making that decision for a team, what, what trait would you value the most in a player? Without curiosity. Hmm. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's curiosity. Why so? Because curious people will always ask why things work or don't work. And you were a big why asker. You have to. <laughs> because that's the only reason you win, is when you can figure out why things happen or didn't happen. Right? If you lose a game, a curious person won't point the finger. A curious person will say, well, why did we lose? You know, instead of just saying them, 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 right. they're going to look at, go back and check the film and ask questions. Okay, why did we mess up there? Why did we blow that coverage there? 
We've got Channing Fry. Ennis out there with Isaiah Thomas. Then it's Ingram. And it's Kuzma in at the four. That's the Laker five. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And what I like about it, Greg, it's been a physical brand of basketball. It's had a little sandpaper element to it. Gritty and, and rough, but that's how you win games. Free throw, good. Matthews. Both free throws, good from Matthews. So last season, Kobe, one of the closest MVP races we've had in a long time, came down to Westbrook and Harden. Who did you think was going to win before the results came out, and why? Yeah, I didn't even stop to think about that because they're both like little brothers to me. So even though I could sit there, a couple and say, LA okay, kids too. Yeah, like I, yeah, I know them both extremely, extremely mm -hmm. well, and they're both extremely deserving of it. So I refuse to good for to you. Split it. Yeah, you know they're both my guys. And different kinds of games, and both sensational individual players. Yeah, they're, they're just phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. they can do so many things um, in the game, and, and now I think the next progression for them is to be able to dominate the game off the ball just as much as they can dominate on the ball, right? Because in the playoffs, the defense has a hard time finding it. Count that one. Matthews has got 28. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's an area they have completely dominated. Well, once they recognized the advantage they had inside, it made a lot of sense just to continue to attack that area. And with the, all the different uh, technological advances in the league, you see a lot of player and coaches now reviewing clips and tablets and a lot of film sessions. I know you used to study a lot of the league's videotapes. How much easier is film study now, say, from the time in the late 90s oh when, you, when, when you got in the it's, NBA? It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's so much easier. Really? Oh, my God. When, when I used to get in the hotel rooms. You, have, you used to have to call the front desk. And they used to roll up TV on the wheels with the VCR with machine, the VCR yeah, right, connected right. to it, right? And I have to have all of these tapes, and you got to put the tape in, and you got to rewind it, and you got to fast forward, it, and you got to rewind it. Yeah. Now it's just everything's right there in front of you, mm -hmm. right? And it's very easy to skip and go to the next game, and then jump back to the game before, or fast forward to the fourth quarter. I mean, it's so easy now. And again, the Lakers, no good. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. Guys, that's putting it mildly. I mean, they've been absolutely dominant. And this quarter, he has clearly been off the mark. Matthews with the steal. Fast break, Dallas. Here's Farrell. Throws down off the coast-to-coast -coast drive. <laughs> well, I like that he shows no hesitation there. Well, that's as easy as it gets, quite honestly. Riding solo and coasting all the way to the rack. No simpler than that. And Kobe, did the Laker front office ever talk to you or, or just brush an idea past you to get your opinion on things, whether it be a, a trade or a free agent signing or whatever? No, we never really did that. We never had that kind of working relationship. Hmm. And I think it's actually better that way Do you? because then it enables me to have a, a better relationship with the guys where they know I'm not involved in those ah, decisions. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Uh, because if so, it makes it weird. In that relationship, guys get traded and you know, teammates are looking at you and it's hard to, for them to trust you and all sorts of stuff. The most conversation I had was with Dr. Buss in this very shaky time Yes. where I, I voiced my concerns and he said, listen, I promise you, you see the right trade, we will pull the trigger and I'm going to do everything I can to get you a championship. I promise you that. And after he said that, I trusted him completely. That was that. And then the following year, he made a beautiful trade for Pablo Salt. He sure did. And a couple championships. And a couple championships. <laughs> 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 yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> Kobe, you're a father. You've enjoyed that process. But basketball got in the way a lot of it. How do you balance fatherhood and, and playing at the level you played at? Yeah, when I was uh, winning championships there, our kids were still relatively young. Mm -hmm. Or I should say babies. In my last few years, they were older and knew you know, they could really feel my absence. And so what I try to do is try to bring them along for the process. So there were mornings I would wake them up and say, let's go. Here we're going. Well, daddy's going to go train, so let's go. No kidding. And I bring them with me. And, and they'd be in the gym shooting around or kicking a soccer ball around or hitting a volleyball around. But I felt like it was important as a father to not just tell them about hard work, but they need to see what I'm doing. When you're sleeping, this is what I'm doing here for three hours. 
Mm-hmm. And so they're a part of the process and feel connected to the process. But traveling and things of that nature is very, very hard because there's been plenty of birthdays that I've missed and school plays that I've missed. Oh, man, you know he'd love to have that one over. Caldwell Pope with a wide open look. Los Angeles with another miss. Now the Mavericks with it. They're on a 14 to 6 run. And it's Barnes slamming it down. And, you know, Barnes is a versatile scoring forward who we've seen him heat up quickly. And he's capable of doing that. Traveling was a part of your job, a part of mine. You, you missed some things with the kids, but I know you take pride, Kobe, in the fact that you made it to a lot of things as well. You were not an absent parent. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, a, you know, I, I, I have a, having a great partner. I mean, my wife has been absolutely amazing, which I think is extremely important as well, um, because she really held down the fort at home, which to me is the toughest job in the world to do. You know, I have it easy in terms of going out there and playing games, but to have the responsibility of actually raising young people to be outstanding citizens. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about pressure. I mean, that, that's, you know, I have to ask how she feels about handling that. You know what yes, I mean? Because yes. that's true pressure. Well said. And the Lakers with possession here. Following the score by Dallas. You look back to the final game as a player, Kobe, all the emotion that was building up for that moment. Then you go out and score 60 points. Surreal moment. Did you ever think for any moment that uh, maybe I've got one year left in the tank after that after that 60 point <laughs> no, performance? You know what? It wasn't about. It wasn't a matter if I had another year in the tank. It was just I just don't want to do this. Oh! Oh! Man, I like seeing Barnes whip out the big time dunks, boy. I tell you, a high flying forward who knows how to throw it down. It's stolen by Smith. Only one man back on D. And it's Barnes slamming it down. Well, I like that he shows no hesitation there. Well, that's as easy as it gets, quite honestly. Riding solo and coasting all the way to the rack. No simpler than that. You know, Kobe, you played 20 years in the NBA. Sports medicine and training becoming increasingly important for extending careers, keeping guys on the floor. How far has that science come in the time from you when you entered the league until the time that you retired last year. Well, it helped me play 20 years. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know? But different methods all the way, huh? Different methods yeah. all the way. I mean, it's uh, when I first came in the league and understanding what sports medicine was at the time and the research on recovery. And as the years went on, more science and research started coming out on the benefits of contrast therapy, of ice baths and uh, surgical procedures. Like, you know, if I would have ruptured my Achilles years ago, I just never would have come back from right. it. You know, now, you know, my Achilles, even as I sit here today, it's like I never hurt it. No kidding. It's amazing. Just increasing their advantage, and right now, they're in a zone on both ends. Yeah, you know, it's gotta be terribly deflating for the opposition. Boy, they look helpless. Really getting beat up, physically and emotionally. And Kobe, in your opinion, what's been the common thread for all these advances in sports medicine? I think it's the minds. It's the minds of people in medicine that are constantly pushing the industry mm -hmm. forward. And, you know, it's our responsibility and the team's responsibility to find these great minds and turn them loose, right? And trust them with the process, mm -hmm. trust them with your athlete. But the key is you have to find the right ones. Los Angeles making a switch here. Ingram's checked in. And the Mavericks call time here. A lot of different ways to lead in the NBA, Kobe. It seems like your leadership style evolved over the course of your career. Talk about that aspect of your game. Well, in the first half of my career, I was more of a tactician, more floor general. And then the second half of my career, I had to really start thinking about the emotions of the group and connecting with the group more and thinking more outside in as opposed to inside out. But I was also, I, mean, I, was, very, I was very tough on guys. I wasn't there to make new friends. Mm -hmm. I was there to help you be the best player you can be to help us win a championship. Is it tough sometimes to have uh, a guy that you were close to take some harsh criticism? No, no, because the goal is what? To win a championship. Mm -hmm. This is why we are here. This is why I'm sitting in this leadership position. I owe it to the team to help us get in that direction. You know, we can sit here and be nice to each other and tell each other what we think we want to hear. And then at the end of the season, we can all hug each other and say, you know what, we'll get them next time. Novitski with it. He's picked up by Lopez. Novitski, no good. And, you know, the defense knew how to play at that time, liked how they made their presence felt without committing the foul. Kobe you played in a big market like Los Angeles, one of the biggest in the world, but uh, many are saying that market size matters less and less into uh, the future of the NBA. Do you agree with that? 
Well, in a certain aspect, yes, because of the digital age that we live in. I mean, the world is considerably smaller. Uh, you have access to market at the touch of a button. So we see Milwaukee Bucks highlights with Anatokounmpo as much as we would see a Kobe Bryant uh, highlight with, the, with Los Angeles. Absolutely. But still, fundamentally, to play in a market like Los Angeles, you know, Los Angeles being the entertainment capital of the world, uh, New York being the great market as well, you know, it's hard to top those no matter how digitally enhanced our society becomes. Hey, Kobe, after dedicating pretty much your entire life to the game of basketball, a game that I know you love, uh, you said you don't miss it. Why is that? Well, because I, I've been through that process. I mean, I started playing a game when I was like two years old and, you know, playing professionally for 20 years, and I left no stone unturned. So there's no regrets there. You know, I've done everything I could possibly do. Mm -hmm. And truthfully, the game is still with me. You know, the discipline has changed. The industry might have changed. But the same approach, the same things that I've learned from the game, I carry with me to this day. So the game is still inside of me. Well, Kobe, more and more front offices around the NBA embracing analytics. At the same time, a lot of veteran executives who have uh, kind of the old time group uh, have been somewhat critical of that approach. Which side do you take on that? Well, I mean, I, I think there's use for analytics. You know, what they do is they tell you what's happening or what's happened but you still need the keen eye to be able to understand why they happen. And that's what numbers can't tell. Put some meaning in back of the numbers. Exactly, yeah. right? It's tough to understand if you see a player shooting this percentage. You know, his first five games of the season, he shot X. The last three games, he shot Y. And you don't understand why. The numbers will tell you that, mm -hmm. but maybe he had something going on at home that was bothering him yes. emotionally. Yes. Right, and therefore his focus was elsewhere. And so his shooting percentage went down, right? The numbers don't show you that. It doesn't show you the emotion of a player. Hart, no good. Well, you, you see the struggles he's having getting anything to go. Yeah, I'm sure he's frustrated, Greg, because nothing is falling right now. But he's going to keep chipping away at it, and that's the attitude. Stay with it. The Lakers shooting is definitely lagging at the moment. They're just 30% in the second quarter. Caldwell Pope outside to the paint and easy two points on the layup yeah and a knifing into the middle Caldwell Pope not just a perimeter threat young fella can elevate here's Barnes uses the glass that time and it's good Barnes has got 12 points now in the quarter he's been on the roll this quarter really leading the way for his team right now Thomas kicks to Caldwell Pope and Barnes comes to help it's Thomas outside. No good there. Now Dallas takes it the other way. Last time they met was in Dallas. And the previous meeting was a win for them and a huge day for the bench. The reserves really stepped it up with their scoring. Greg, we know how important it is when you can go to your reserves without much drop-off in production. It gives you a big advantage. I know they'd love to see that again tonight. There's a minute 34 left now here in the second. That one falls. Nine points for Brandon Ingram. And you know, guys, not only can Ingram score from the perimeter, but he can get it done inside, too. I mean, the way he releases the shot and that extension he gets on it makes it very hard to block. Caldwell Pope will not go. This is off the front iron. Well, Kobe, I know you've got to go, but it's been a real treat for you to uh, join us tonight. I know our fans have all enjoyed the broadcast. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, thank you for having me, man. Looking forward to doing this again. A great Kobe Bryant. And Clark, you've been broadcasting for the entire span of Kobe's playing career. How is it to share a booth with someone who you've watched progress throughout their entire career? Well, it certainly reminds me that I'm uh, moving into that last block on the demographic charts. I'm in the early third quarter, <laughs> if you will, that's for sure. But it's a treat because it's wonderful to see how he grew as a player and as a man. And uh, the much, much Mind respect the for Kobe Bryant because he's a first ballot Hall of Famer and doing great things off the court, too. Well, you know, historically, the Lakers have been a glamour franchise and have been able to attract top-tier free agents. The temptation exists to skip any rebuilding and instead look to reload with new stars. We'll see if that pays dividends going forward. Hart the pass to Kuzma. That's tipped and stolen by Barnes. 
The finish, he slams it down right on top of Brandon Ingram. Barnes is a problem in these fast break situations, Kevin. I mean, he's got strength, he's got skill, and he's got excellent speed. The Lakers shooting about 35% from the floor. Not much falling for them. And Coach Walton has said, when you build from within, you control your own destiny. What do you think, Clark? Should they build slowly but surely or look to land the, the big free agent? Well, I think you do a combination of the two, but slow and steady usually wins the race. I know in this day and age we want everything microwave, but one of the questions for the Lakers is how many of these young guys have real star potential? Who are those guys you can build around? And if you don't see it, the temptation grows stronger to go out and try to find that ready-made star. Another shot. And he didn't get quite enough under that one. Ingram. No good that time. And so a pretty lopsided game through the first half. Mavericks ahead, opening up a huge gap. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thank you, Kevin. Harrison, a big first half for you offensively. How did you get loose? Uh, my team has just been finding me. I've just been trying to just uh, run hard. You know, make good backdoor cuts, run it in transition, and they've been giving me good looks. You have not stopped moving at all, and it's led to good results. Thanks, Harrison. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks for the great interview, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Ernie Johnson here. Got Shaq. Got Kenny the Jet Smith. We welcome you back to the halftime show on 2K Sports. Harrison Barnes led the way in the first half. He had 32 points, eight rebounds, and three assists. Some great work from him in the first two quarters. And Kenny, what are your thoughts on how Dallas played? They looked like they were playing an easy game of pitch and catch out there. The playmakers and finishers were in sync on every level. The assist disparity, now that was big. Now that's the reason why it's a blowout right now, and they play well. Shaq, your take on the Lakers. Well, they struggle in a number of areas. Protecting the rim is really at the top of the list. They haven't made that a priority. They haven't put forth a whole lot of effort. You got to protect the rim. And that wraps up halftime as the game is set to get back underway. Let's send it to Kevin Harlan and crew, standing by courtside. Getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. And you know, Harrison Barnes has really been making it happen, guys. Oh, well, they've done a good job of letting the game come to them. And really few four shots here so far. And, you know, Greg, I like how they've set the pace. There's a lot of time left in this one, so there's no rush. You don't have to go 70 miles an hour. Keep it at about 45. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. And here's the Lakers coming off that loss against the Timberwolves. And you know what? They were giving away points, missing at the line. A big factor in the outcome. Ditto that. When you give up this many points at the line, makes it a lot easier for the opposition. On the floor for Dallas, Matthews and Barnes, the forward pair. Smith is out there with J.J. Barea, and it's Nowitzki in at the center, filling out the middle. The Mavericks shooting 59% up to this point. They're working for great shots, and they're hitting them. Smith dishes to Barnes. It's good, the assist that time from Smith. 34 points for Barnes. And they are attacking the rim and getting great results. And how? I mean, they're taking this defense to task, taking them to school. Every one of their last 10 points have come in the paint. Ingram kicks to Randall. Shot clock at six. There's the three. It's rebounded by Dallas. Nowitzki's got rebound number five here tonight. Here's Barnes. Up again. It's good on the putback. Smith's got his first bucket of the night. Just no resistance on the inside. That's their fifth consecutive make in the paint. And Greg, those looks they're allowing are almost automatic. 
Lopez inside. He's against Nowitzki, and it's good two points. Hart's got his second basket of the night. For Dallas, they've gone two of three from the field to start the second half. Barnes stayed with it, but they couldn't get it to fall. Lakers have gone one of three since starting the second half. Over in the corner, Caldwell Pope. A three-pointer off the mark. And you know, one for four, not a good start. I mean, they got to play with a little more energy this half. L.A. has gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. The pass to Hart. Nice ball movement here by the Lakers. They double him with Matthews. It's going to be out of bounds. Los Angeles will retain possession. And a look here at the scoring trend over the last several months for Caldwell Pope. Look, sometimes you go up, sometimes down, and, and, and the trend has been on the downward side in terms of his average points per game. And a variety of factors can be the culprit. And a lot of times you focus on the efficiency more than just pure point output. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. Count that one. And Clark, you've seen so many college and NBA games. What skill or mindset do you see as the best predictor for when a college player is going to be an NBA star? Well, it's hard to predict stardom. But clearly things that transfer from a skill standpoint from college to the NBA, at least historically, have been the ability to rebound at a high rate. That seems to always make its way from college to the pro game. And then... The prof oh! Oh, oh, oh. Up high and down hard. Love seeing Barnes be aggressive like that, Kevin. Showing off his quickness and athleticism in a big way. How was my um, impression of good? one of your favorite lines? I like that. You sounded great. Better than me. I love it, Clark. <laughs> good job. Oh. Oh, he is a highlight reel unto himself, guys. Well, that could be a contender for the dunk of the year, I think. Without question, a crowd pleaser to the 10th degree. That free throw, good from Randall. And Julius Randall, that seventh pick back in the 14 draft out of Kentucky, was a five-star recruit out of high school and, and was able to help get the Wildcats to the championship round. So this is a guy who is used to the spotlight. Out of bounds, Dallas will take possession. Here's a look at the 2K leaderboard. It's certainly been a good month for these teams on the offensive glass. The Lakers second. They have gone all out to win the rebounding battle every night, and it's been paying off. I mean, the second chance points thus far have been really impressive. And Julius Randle with an intriguing game, a great rebounder. He's a pretty good ball handler for his size, too. Yeah, he, he likes to rip it and run and very athletic when he gets ahead of steam. And, boy, he can be tough to contain. Here's Hart. They get it back. Randall with the ball. Guarded now by Barnes. And Barnes comes to help. And there's the foul. It goes on Wesley Matthews. That's his first foul. Measury. He's checked in for Dirk Nowitzki. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the third quarter. Got a piece of it. There's a good screen for three. Caldwell Pope. Another miss by Caldwell Pope. The Mavericks have gone four of nine from the floor so far in the third. Matthews goes in. The shot misses. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. Here's Hart, covered by Smith. Ingram, that's in for his fifth field goal of the game. Makes him five for 12 so far. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Everybody on the same page, completely in sync. Tremendous communication and awareness. And it's the Mavericks on the break. Matthews leading the charge. Here's Barnes and a good offensive board. And he gets the bucket. Barnes has got 40 points. 
And a look at how the hustle game has been going for the Mavericks. Boy, their hounding, harassing effort at the defensive end, very impressive. And they forced quite a few turnovers as a result. Yeah, and another thing, they, they've created a lot of turnovers, but they've also been able to convert when they've gotten out in transition. Here's Matthews. Changes up. Barnes can't get it to go. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Exactly. Can't play it any better than that, Greg. And it's Harrison Barnes with the foul. That will get him his fourth foul of the game. Isaiah Thomas, he's checked in for Hart. Doug McDermott, he's checked in for the Mavericks. Picked by Randall. Thomas kicks to Ingram. Here's Lopez, lays it up and banks it in. Lopez has got eight points. Because of that big body and seven-foot frame, Lopez a handful to keep off the glass. And the shot is good. You know, this quarter has been all him, all about him. They're getting it to him in his spots, and he's taking over. Thomas passes to Randall, and it's Harrison Barnes with the foul. That will be foul number five on him. Well, one more, and that's it. He'll be DQ, disqualified. He's got to be able to defend without picking up that last disqualifying foul. And Barnes comes to help, and it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Randall. And let's look now at some numbers for Contavious Caldwell-Pope. How last month turned out for him, he's averaging 11 points a game, five rebounds, and three assists. And, and some pretty good numbers, guys. He's certainly making a contribution. Better than expected. He still has a ways to go. But I like what I'm seeing right now. Smith against Thomas. Smith with the basket on the assist by Barnes. Smith's got four this quarter. Yeah, Smith makes you pay when he gets inside. Despite not being that big, he's got a lot of game in the paint. Near the three-point line, it's Thomas. Can't nail the jumper. Man, you just make the assumption that's going down. I mean, an uncontested mid-range jumper, I think he should have buried it. But you know what? He didn't. It happened. The Lakers shooting just 33% in the second half so far. They need to look at more high-quality shots. Their game plan needs to change if they're going to get out of this hole because he is just not there offensively. And turnovers have been the issue for him. You can see the coaches have gotten into him a little bit about this. They've got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Randall with the bucket. You know, you just can't let Randall hang around on the glass. I mean, that's how he generates a number of scores, and he does it pretty much every game. Yep, that one goes in there. measury has got six points. And you just hate to give up those second chance points. Yeah, those are back crushers. I mean, they really crack your back when you give teams second shots like that. Good, and it's Berea who picks up the assist. Berea's got assist number five here tonight. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. Yeah, and that's four straight field goals now, Greg. They've allowed from point blank range. Can't happen. Measury with a steal. The drive by Barnes, and it's Barnes slamming it down. Nice seeing Barnes go for that dunk. Always looking to finish with power at the rim. That's how you're supposed to do it. The Lakers shooting just 33%, struggling to get good looks. Thomas with the ball. Now Smith defending. Pass to Kuzma. Shoots the three. Cranes it from beyond the arc. 11 points in the game. That's the kind of D that you're not going to find success with, guys. They've got to get a hand in the face. McDermott can't get it to go. Well defended, though, and, and he's not someone who handles that kind of pressure very well. For the Mavericks, 16 consecutive years of 500 basketball or better. Coming to an end last season, unfortunately for them. Yeah, it was the beginning of a rebuild. The first time in a long time for the Mavs, and they waived some of their veterans uh, to free up space and, and court time to further develop those young players. And with how competitive this organization is that you know they'll do everything they can to get back in contention to try to send Dirk out on a high note. Two shots. That's good from Barnes. 
Well, you look around the league at, at some of the younger talent, Clark, and there's a lot of great young players. Uh, who do you think might make the jump to superstar status in a few short years? Tell you what, if he can stay healthy, um, Joel Embiid is special. Man, Devin Booker I like, fun to watch, great shooter. But I'd give the nod to Joel Embiid. This guy is graceful, he's big, he's strong, and highly skilled. And the Lakers, Greg, for a long time, could rely on the lure of Los Angeles to draw top free agents. History does a lot, it seems. Yeah, Paul George listing them on his short list shows they still have that pull, but the Lakers will be big players in free agency, I believe, in the near future. Ennis dishes to Thomas. Back to Ennis. Passes it to Kuzma. It's stolen by Berea. The drive by Barnes. And it's Barnes slamming it down. Oh, nice there, getting the reverse. Love that. And, and the fans got a little bit of a show there. Guys, that one definitely had a little something extra on it. A jaw-dropper emoji is what I look like right now. Incredible. It's going to be out of bounds. Los Angeles will retain possession. A chance here to take a look at where the Mavericks rank in the NBA currently. And, you know, going back to their turnovers, fewest in our league, that shows you the intelligence they play with. You have to beat them. They are not going to do it for you. And Barnes comes to help. To the middle. Mejri with the rebound. Dallas shooting 41% from the floor so far in the third. And he hits it and gets hacked on the play. A three-point possibility if he can convert the free throw. Every time they get scored on during this run, it's come from inside the paint. One of the things that every great player has to have is a tremendous work ethic, and Harrison Barnes has the reputation of being an outstanding worker. He wants to be special, and he's willing to put the time in to give it a chance to happen. One shot, gentlemen. That's good from Barnes. And Clark, another thing with Barnes, he's very clear-sighted on the areas he needs to improve on. Yeah, exactly, Kevin. I mean, at times, he can be pretty hard on himself. That's part of how you get better. Um, irrational self-confidence, pretty common in this league. That's not HB, though. I mean, he's more cerebral, and his desire is what balances it all out for him. Now that's how you pick up second chance points. Stay active and be ready as soon as the shot goes up. No good from Fry. Dallas shooting really well. 54% from the floor. Puts it up from 15. The putback. It's good on the putback. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys too. Ennis kicks to Fry. And Thomas has it in the corner. Los Angeles with another miss. And they just tried everything to stem the tide here, but nothing seems to work. Yeah, they can't find anything. They're lost right now. Everything working against them. Powell with the steal. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. And, you know, when Powell is this deep, Kevin, I mean, the defense knows they're in trouble. Sometimes they have no choice but to foul him. Dirk Nowitzki, he's checked in for the Mavericks. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. No good on the free throw. Well, you know, the Mavericks are looking to refresh the roster with some younger players, kind of interject some youth into that roster. And Dwight Powell, an athletic big man, is making a case as being a key part of that youth movement. Good on the second free throw. 
And Powell has toyed with the three-point shot, Clark, but has yet to convert at a high rate from out there. And you know what, Kevin? At this point, if he's finishing around the rim, I think that's most effective. 6'11 with pretty good leaping ability. I mean, he can punch it on you with ease. And a look now at the various locations of the shots taken so far for Nowitzki. Right now, after looking at that chart, you, you pretty much can just jog down the court. He gets it in the paint. That Just time and time again, he's worked his way in close and made a shot over a defender or found another way to convert. Just great stuff coming from him thus far. First free throw is good. And Clark, a lot of former players at a specific instance when they knew they were special, the way they played the game of basketball. Did you ever have a moment like that where you realized that you could make it as a player? Yeah, there was a time when that became more realistic to me, Kevin. And I grew up in Cleveland, and during the summers, a lot of the Cleveland Cavaliers would stay in the area and play pickup basketball to stay in shape. And I got a chance to bump heads with a lot of those guys, Jim Jones and the late Terry Furlow, Austin Carr, Bingo Smith, Mike Mitchell. And I was only 15, 16 years old. And while those guys were going at half speed, it gave me the encouragement that I might be able to get to where they were if I continued to work hard and stay healthy. So at 15 or 16, during one of those summers, I began to realize that I might have a chance to realize the dream of being an NBA. That's unacceptable shot selection there, Kevin. I mean, why on earth did he think that was a good look? No good that time. And the Lakers going the other way now. After this one, they're off to Sacramento to take on the Kings. And that'll be game one of a four-game road trip. Lopez with the bucket. And amidst the tall timber, he's right at home. Extremely comfortable. Lopez getting it done. Good work there as it goes. Howell's got nine points in the quarter. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. Here's Thomas. And sticking right with it. Gets the foul with the bucket. And he'll go to the line. Yeah, outstanding job there of taking the harm and still able to finish. Yeah, he imposed his will on the defense that time. He was not going to be denied right there. Hard, he's checked in for Brooke Lopez. The Mavericks also with a sub. Matthews is checked in. Free throw good, Thomas. Dallas shooting 47% since getting things started in the third quarter. And the jam by Turk Nowitzki. I like watching Nowitzki get it to the rack because he's a little unorthodox, but he still makes it work. Keeps the ball high so the defenders can't get to it. To the inside, Fry. Powell pulls it in. Powell's got four rebounds now tonight. And there's Dirk Nowitzki on the assist by Matthews. And that's now 21 points for Nowitzki. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting not looking uh, too good out there in the second half, right around 32%. Gets the three-pointer to fall. Kuzma's got two now from beyond the arc in the third for the Lakers. Good on the shot. 23 points for Dirk Nowitzki. And Nowitzki is an accomplished scorer inside. Uses his height extremely well. You can't allow him to get that kind of positioning. Now Ennis. He hasn't scored yet. That I'm sure will change. Here's Hart. And that's not going to go. Harrison Barnes getting it done for Dallas. He's looking to make history here today. Who knows how many points he'll end up with when it's all said and done. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Rick Carlisle had some words for his team. Let's hear what he had to say. 
Hey, defense, great job. Hawking, helping, terrific, all right? Stay with it. Henrik Carlisle, moments ago, amped up about their defensive effort, just telling them to stay the course. And there is nothing a coach likes more than when all five guys are sacrificing to get stops. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. Brewer is out there with Ennis. Then it's Dang. Then it's Ivica Zubac. And it's Bryant in at the four slot. That's the Laker five. Pass to Zubac. Comes up empty down low. Dallas shooting has just been outstanding tonight. 56% as a team in this game. Yes, that goes in. And 10 of their last 12 coming off assists. Now here's Ennis. He's covered closely. Unhindered, going all the way. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Vitally important. I mean, if you relax for a second, you're cooked. You're toast. They learned that lesson there. Brewer's shot is off. The Mavericks have gone two of three from the field to get the fourth quarter started. That's tipped. And, you know, this is really what Brewer does quite well, Kevin. Extending out nicely and swatting away shots. Ennis passes to Bryant. Here's the screen. He kicks to Brewer. The pass to Zubats. She's over Powell. Zubats no good. Jones against Dang, and he gets the bucket. I, I love the ball movement there. He put that on a silver platter. Just served him up. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. From deep, it's good from long range. And defensively, you have got to extend to their shooters. They have been on fire this half. Well, you know, the D just hasn't been there for real. I mean, these shooters are getting any perimeter shot they want. It's a bunch of warm-up jump shots out there. Out of bounds, Dallas takes possession. The Mavericks have gone three of six from the field so far in the fourth quarter. Count the bucket coming off a perfectly placed assist. And some guys just have a nose for scoring. And this one couldn't have been any easier. Yeah, that was actually no defense at all there, Greg. I mean, layups don't come any easier than that. I mean, they're piling it on now. Feeds it to Brewer. Let's it go from deep. Here's Zubats. Nice work on the board. He's paying off with the basket. Boy, the defense looked helpless there. I mean, he's going to lay it up every time when he's got a smaller defender on it. Here's Jones, and it's in there. Oh, they own the interior right now. Ten straight points coming from inside. Well, constantly finding lanes to the basket, getting great looks inside. Hooked away. It's stolen by Jones for the finish. And then Jones with the jam. And how about the fast hands and then getting right out in transition? Well, turning defense into offense, Greg. Outstanding effort there. Swiped it away with ease, and off they went. A three ball. And the rebound goes to the Mavericks. Boy, I'm surprised he couldn't put that away. I mean, the defense clearly botched an assignment, leaving him open. And he makes that one. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket, coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist totals, heck, they've been clearly the better team. There's the dish to Brewer. Here's the three. He can't get that one to fall. Now Dallas takes it the other way. They'll be off next to Utah for a meeting with the Jams. That will conclude their brief two-game road trip. Oh, great ball movement there. LA's gotten some tough luck from three-point range. In the fourth quarter, they've hit just one of six from deep. Bryant drives in, so he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. Clark, we talk about the importance of what a player can do. How important is it for a player to know what they cannot do? Very important. Understanding who you are and what your skill set is and how that fits with your team, critically important. Not only knowing it, but then embracing your role within your particular limitations, skill set, and teamwork. Two shots. Max on the first. Eight. 
He's off on the first. Well, you know, one thing you can be certain of with the Mavs, guys, is they're going to make the most of what they have. I think Rick Carlisle, who actually spent some time as the head coach of the Pistons and the Pacers, is one of the very best in pro sports. He's a master at putting his players in the optimal position for their success. Measury, he's checked in for Dallas, and he sinks the second. You talk about the Mavs keeping uh, some tricks up their sleeves, their mastery of the zone defense, crucial to their 2011 title. Yeah, you know, zone defense, Kevin, much less common than man-to-man. -man. Teams don't see it much over the course of the season. Part of the reason that if teams play it effectively, it can be a good tool. Uh, they knew if they got good at it, they could stymie unprepared opponents, and that's what they did. Just the way they did against LeBron in Miami in those finals back in 2011. Ennis kicks to Bryant. He dishes it to Brewer. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Man, I like the way Brewer attacks the defense. Phenomenal at getting himself to the foul line. Well, you look at the Lakers as an organization, and we know historically one of the great sports organizations in any sport. Uh, the reputation, though, has been slipping a bit in recent years. The front office moves last season, bringing what they hope will be some stability and certainly a bit more prestige to the team. That free throw, no good. And when you look at the Lakers' new front office, do you think it'll be an improvement? Time will tell, Kevin. I think that's hard to predict. The pieces certainly lean towards success, but it's a hard job. Certainly there's more credibility now. I don't think there's any question about that. He's off on the second. Clark, we've seen a few active players have their own podcast that they produce throughout the season. I think that's a good idea or a bad idea for them? Um, again, I'm ambivalent to that because the landscape is so different now with the social media platforms. And I like the fact that players have a chance to control their narrative, their story, through the different social media platforms, the Players' Tribune, podcast. Now, you have to balance that with your responsibilities and obligations to your team, your teammates, and your franchise. And so that's where it becomes a challenge, managing your time effectively and using it wisely. But clearly, players should have the opportunity to be fully engaged people beyond just playing the game. And I need to see some more assertiveness out of these defenders. Ennis with the ball. To the inside. Here's Zubats. And two free throws coming up. Unable to get that one to go with all the content. You know, the Mavericks are in an interesting phase, kind of that in-between, in-betwix phase. Even as they look to go young around him, they're committed to keeping Dirk Nowitzki in Dallas for the remainder of his career. So, uh, again, a delicate position, but I think they're doing it the right way, keeping Dirk around. First free throw is good. And there was a time, Clark, when Dirk Nowitzki considered leaving Dallas in pursuit of another title. But that time has passed. Yeah, you know what? It's great to see. I love to see one franchise superstars. It doesn't happen a lot, but when it does, it's special. I mean, he's not the player he was five years ago. He's not able to single-handedly lift the team to favorite status. But he can certainly have an impact as one of the legends in the game, leading and also helping prepare the next generation. And the dunk by Powell. Oh, you gotta love seeing Powell attack. I mean, an agile big guy who gets it to the cup in a hurry. The Lakers shooting just 31% in the game. Ennis dishes to Bryant. Back to Ennis. Outside Dang. The feed now to Bryant. using his post moves to get the two points. 
And that's his strong suit, the ability to find his way through the D and finish at the line. A lot of guys have great vision, but they're not always willing passers. Not the case with Smith. Very unselfish and aware of keeping his teammates involved. Ennis passes to Bryant. Nice ball movement here by the Lakers. Count it. Good. Almost an impossible shot to block in the post. The defender can't give up that much of a height advantage and expect to contest it. Here's Mesri. Count that as his seventh field goal in ten tries. He's shooting a very good 70%. This is a fantastic performance in this half. He didn't play as well in the first, but you know, you just know with this guy, he's always ready to turn it around. Offensive rebound. Zubats makes it off the glass. Zubats has got eight points in the quarter. They've cashed in on a lot of second chance opportunities here in the second half. That extra effort will help them cut into this deficit. And you can see it. They're in a nice rhythm in terms of shooting. It's been that way the entire second half. And you know, Greg, it's hard to ask for much more than that because they're getting to their spots and they're knocking down the shots. It's stolen by Smith. And it's slammed in by Smith. Man, I like the fact that Smith is very quick of foot, gets into the lane easily, and then finishes really well around the rim. Ennis kicks to Dang. Now here's Ennis, covered by Smith. Ooh. Oh, 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 yeah! Here's Mesri. It's hauled in by Zubats. Zubats has got three rebounds so far in the game. Now here's Ennis, covered by Smith. Puts it up from 12. Lock at six. There's the pick. Here's Ennis. Tips it up. Here's Bryant. They had a number of cracks in it, but came away empty-handed. Covered by Brewer. Bryant with the rebound. Lakers shooting just 30% from the field here in the fourth. Ennis kicks to Dang. Here's Zubats, and it is flushed down with a nice jam. And Kevin, lots of standing around and, and watching by the defense that time. And he makes them pay, doesn't he, Greg, huh, with that emphatic slam. And guys, that'll get his heart rate up a little bit, I can tell you that. Watch out, he can be a dangerous player when his motor is revved up that way. Kicks it to Ennis. Sweet little floater. And you know, Brewer does a lot of things well, including passing the rock. And the dunk by Powell. Now flying high and throwing it down with the one hand. One of his favorite moves right there, guys. Does it as well as anybody, fellas. Tremendous skill while in the air. And Brewer kicks to Zubox. And for the Lakers, a big boost to their franchise fortunes this summer. They not only stay in the top three, but move up a spot. Able to draft hometown kid Lonzo Ball. And you know, the Lakers drafting second in the lottery for the third straight year, Kevin. You got to cash in on those picks eventually. And Ball, I think, has the chance to be really an outstanding player. Maybe the best of all their young players, although Brandon Ingram, I think, has a tremendous ceiling. The comparisons to Jason Kidd with Ball, I understand those and don't disagree with them. He can potentially be uh, the kind of franchise point guard you build around. And Lakers head coach Luke Walton got his start as an NBA coach in Golden State as a top assistant. He said, looking back, he would have paid to coach under Steve Kerr with everything he's learned. Wow, that's a high compliment from Walton. Kerr and Walton have very similar personalities, too. I mean, both are pretty even-keeled, low-key kind of guys. And when Kerr's back surgery sidelined him, Walton led the Warriors to the best start in NBA history. Pretty amazing. Always enjoy solid, good passing. Easily setting up his teammate does not get any easier than that. Here's Hart, covered by Smith. Out in his own on the break. Look at oh, that jam. Wow. Come I mean, on just now. Bring beautiful. the thunder. Rock that rim. And guys got careless with the ball there, and the turnover 
leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. That's exactly the way to do it, too, Kevin. Go hard to the bucket and don't let them set up the defense. Here's Brewer. That one a little long. And so far this quarter, he's been a little off on his game. Just a touch. I mean, it seems like he's forcing shots a little bit to me, Greg. Not playing his game right now. And with every miss, the pressure intensifies. Hart the pass to Fry. Fires from deep. Hart, no good. Well, Maverick shooting 59% up to this point. They're working for great shots, and they're hitting them. Smith's shot is good. And, you know, Smith says, bump that. I'm not going to let the defense overwhelm me. If he's close to the rim, he's going to find a way to score around good defense. Here's Brewer. No good. They had a chance to end the run there. Kevin, he's missing shot after shot after shot from long range. With time running low, he'd be better off trying something else. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for Dallas. You don't see this kind of a blowout often, but tonight this is a quality win across the board to deliver out uh, this kind of punishment. They definitely never changed the approach. They just kept after it and showed they were clearly the better team in just about every single category. And so they'll stretch their victory total to 19 on the season. And they will walk out of here feeling really good about themselves today, guys. A big win over a conference foe they'd split their previous two games with. Greg, they've got one more game left against them, and there's no doubt they'll use this as a jumping-off point to take another game off them later in the year. At least that's the plan. The one player that really Gentlemen, stands out, of course, shots. in this one, it was two a shots. dazzling game for Barnes. He affected the game so much with the way he was able to come out and get steals and extra possessions for his team. The free throw drops from McDermott. And the Mavericks' ownership amongst the most outspoken and influential in the NBA. Kevin, that is an understatement on both counts. Outspoken and influential. Their owner is one of the best in sports, I think. The team's success has provided credibility, and with the league becoming more forward-thinking, Things starting to swing again in Dallas's way. More and more we see coaches resting players to keep them from getting overworked. The benefits, Clark, are clear for the players, but is it something that is getting overused? I don't know if overused is the right word, Kevin. I don't like to see it as much because I think there are other ways you can rest players. Games can be part of your strategy, but how about practices being more part of how you rest players? It got an awful lot of attention this past season and for good reason. And I would think the coaches and players will adjust because it's not a good optics for your viewing public and your paying patrons to just arbitrarily do it. I understand it, but I think there's a balancing act that could be performed that would make it not appear as um, disruptive to the fans as it was this past season. Here's Los Angeles now. Hart the pass to Zubats. Here's the screen. And so they foul intentionally. Really no idea why you're fouling in a situation like that. You know, maybe there's some bad blood between those two. Yeah, but that's no excuse for that kind of foul. I mean, that might be an explanation for it, but certainly doesn't justify it. And even then, it's uh, just not a good play. Dallas calls timeout. They're in front. 35 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Guys, what's your take? And guys, just avoid... The unnecessary fouls here. That's about the only thing that can get them in trouble at this point. now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Harrison Barnes. And Kevin, it's a no-brainer. He's controlled every aspect of this game, and it's just so fun to see a player perform at a level that's just higher than anyone else out on the floor. After two straight losses, they switched it up a bit tonight, giving him a much bigger role, and it's worked out even better than they could have hoped for.
Dallas making a switch here. Powell's checked in. And he makes the first. And the Lakers breathe a sigh of relief this summer, retaining their lottery pick that had a greater than 50-50 chance of falling to the 76ers. And you know what, Kevin? That's a huge boost for the franchise drafting Lonzo Ball. They kept their pick, but that means they will lose their 2018 pick. No upside to losing games this season. They're going all in. There's 31 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. There's a good screen, and it's Dang in the corner. And not sure what he was thinking there. Now the Mavericks with it. Well, for the Mavericks, they can just run out the clock. And he drops in the way up off the glass. And leaving nothing to chance here on this game-clinching run. Exactly. Cold-blooded. Separation solidified. Great effort. Shooting Josh Hart. Two shots. First free throw is good. Off on that one, so he goes one for two at the line. Solid play on the low block, and that one's good. Yeah, with, with this lead, uh, that's probably going to do it. Fans heading for the exit. And, Greg, you know how hard it is to win on the road, but they seem to have this one firmly in control and have been very impressive today. Josh Hart. Taking two shots. Two. First one falls for him. And he can't hit the second. So we see the Mavericks taking the win here. A resounding victory for them. And Greg in enemy territory, no less. And that's exactly right. But with the way they controlled the game and, and just completely took the crowd out of it, that's how to get it done on the road. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks, Kevin. Wesley, great night for you. How did it all come together? My team's doing a great job of getting me open, uh, and our guards are finding me, and I'm just putting the ball in the basket when I can. You were open and available all night, Wesley. Thanks very much. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. Great interview once again. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Greg Anthony, and David Olk, this is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. See you next time.